In a faraway land, a soldier came tramping down the road, marching briskly and whistling. Suddenly, he let out a cry of surprise. <gasps> An old witch had appeared in front of him. Raising a bony old hand, she said, Brave soldier, what has all your courage done for you? You're the poorest man in the land. But if you listen to me carefully, I'll make you rich. Rich? What must I do then? You see that oak tree over there? It's hollow, and underneath it are three large rooms. I want you to go down to them. But how shall I get out? Like this. Tie this rope around your waist. You can then let yourself down to the bottom, and I can bring you up again by pulling on the rope. And what is there in these three rooms? In the first, you will find a large chest, and sitting on it, a dog with eyes as big as saucers. Pick him up and put him on this checked apron of mine. Then open the chest. It's full of pennies. Take as many as you want. In the second room, you will find another chest. And sitting on it, a dog with eyes as big as mill wheels. Pick him up also and put him on my checked apron. Then you can open the chest which is filled with silver. Take all you want. In the third room, there is yet another chest. And the eyes of the dog on that one are as big as towers. Put him on my apron. And from that chest, take all the gold you want. And what do you want for yourself, old witch? Only an old tinder box that my grandmother left in the tree the last time she was down there. Find it and bring it to me. I want it very much. Fair, isn't it? The money for you. The tinderbox for me. The soldier tied the rope round his waist, took hold of the checked apron the witch gave him, and lowered himself into the hollow tree. He found the first room, and sitting on a chest was an enormous dog with eyes as big as saucers, and who would have frightened anyone but this brave soldier? You can't frighten me. I've been to the wars, you know. He took hold of the dog, put him on the apron, opened the chest, and saw that it really was filled with pennies. The soldier filled his pockets, then his boots, and lastly his helmet. Then he closed the chest, put the dog back on it, and went into the second room. he saw, sitting on another chest, another dog, even more enormous than the first, and with eyes as big as mill wheels. But he took hold of him, put him on the apron, and opened the chest. Silver coins! Hundreds and thousands of silver coins! How silly of me to grab all those pennies! He threw all the pennies on the floor, and instead filled his pockets, his boots, and helmet with the silver. Then he closed the chest, put the dog back on it, and made his way into the third room. The dog 
dog in this room had eyes as big as towers, and he was growling. There, there's a good dog now. He put the dog on the witch's apron and opened up the chest, which was full of gold coins. So, throwing away all the silver money, he filled up his pockets, his boots and his helmet with gold. Then he closed the chest, put the dog back, and it was at this moment he noticed lying on the floor an old tinderbox. Well, there it is. I nearly forgot it. Going back to the first room, he shouted up, I've got your tinderbox, old witch. Now pull up the road. The soldier had so much money on him, that the weight of it was tearing his clothes. He was terribly heavy, and the old woman had to pull so hard to get him out of the tree that when she did so at last, she fell down dead. The effort had killed her. Poor old lady. What bad luck. And now here I am with a tinderbox as well. I'll keep it, in memory of you, old lady. And thank you just the same for all this gold. He took to the road again. At the first town he came to, he bought himself some fine soups. Then he put up at the best hotel he could find and had his meals at the finest inns. And because he had plenty of money, he soon had plenty of friends. One day, one of these friends said to him, Did you know that the king's daughter is the fairest in the land? Then why is she never to be seen? An astrologer once predicted to the king that the man she would marry would be an ordinary soldier. So that this shall never happen, the king has locked up his daughter in the tower of his castle and never lets her out. It was not long before the soldier had spent all his money and then he had to go and live in an attic. His fine clothes became shabby, losing all their elegance. And of course, all his friends were gone. If ever I should be rich again, I take more care of my money. What a fool I've been. Now I can't even afford to buy a box of matches to light my pipe. But just a moment. Of course, I've still this tinderbox I got from the old woman. He took the tinderbox from his pocket and struck it. And suddenly, there stood before him the dog with eyes as big as saucers. The dog said, What does my master require? What do I require? Well, uh, let me see. Uh, something to eat? Something to drink? Uh, some clean clothes? Th that, that's all for the moment. The dog disappeared. In the twinkling of an eye, he was back, holding in his mouth a basket of food. While the soldier was eating, the dog disappeared again. And when he returned this time, he was carrying clothes fit for a lord. The old woman was right. This tinderbox is worth more than all the money in the world. Thinking about this, he soon realized that when he struck the tinderbox once, 
there was the dog with eyes as big as saucers. When he struck it twice, there was the dog with eyes as big as mill wheels. And when he struck it three times, there was the dog with eyes as big as towers. And no matter what the soldier wanted, one of the dogs always brought it to him in the twinkling of an eye. He returned to the best hotel and again had meals in the best inns. And because he appeared to be so rich, he once more had plenty of friends. One day, he said to one of his dogs, I should like to see the king's daughter. And if she is as beautiful as they say, I shall marry her. In no time at all, the dog returned, carrying on his back a sleeping princess. But one of the maids of honor, who had been looking after her, had tied round the princess's neck a little bag filled with flour. She had also made a small hole in it, so that the flour trickled out. By following the trail left by the flour in the streets, the royal guards found the soldier at his fine hotel. They seized him and carried him off to prison, where they prepared to hang him. Just as they were about to put the rope around his neck, the soldier appealed to the king. Before I die, noble sire, allow me to have one last smoke on my pipe. Just one pipe, sire. It will not take very long. The king could hardly refuse so small a request. The soldier struck his tinderbox once, twice, then three times. Immediately, there appeared the three dots, the one with the eyes as big as saucers, the one with eyes as big as mill wheels, and the one with eyes as big as towers. They carried off the king and the queen and the maid of honor. And so it is said, they have never been seen again since. As for the soldier, he married the princess and became king instead of her father. At the coronation festivities, the three dogs frolicked joyfully around the royal coach.